Hey guys, Crypto here from Cryptogasmic.com and Cryptocurrency Investing Facebook group. Um, lots of panic in the air. So let's have a discussion now about where we feel the crypto markets are going. Are they going to bounce? Are they going to fall further? Let's look through the charts. Let's spend an hour discussing this and trying to make some, uh, some uh, educated predictions about what's going to happen. All right, settle in, drop me a message and let's go. All right, guys, I hope you're all doing well wherever you are in the world um, out there. Let's spend an hour having a little chat about the markets, where they're going. Um, you know, what are the possibilities? Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? Do we hold? Let's talk about some different strategies. And, you know, more than anything, I think let's just put everything into a little bit of perspective and, um, you know, try to help you make your own decisions about how you're going to do in uh, in crypto. Hey, Catherine, how you doing, darling? Good to see you there. I hope life is good in um, Philadelphia today. John, how you doing, mate? No, I haven't looked at Dascoin. I'm just sitting down now, mate. Just uh, I'm here on the Gold Coast in sunny Queensland, Australia, um, overlooking the beach. I'm going to do the trading show. I'm going to go for a nice walk. Um, and that's what I recommend for everybody, you know, um, when things are sort of diving, don't be sitting there looking at the at the charts all day long. Um, you know, get out, spend some time with your wife, your husband, your family, your kids. Um, but, you know, let's jump into it and have a look. Right. So first of all, I like to jump out and look at the big picture of things, you know, and I get messages. Um, I... I get messages um, all day long from people saying, you know, I'm in a lot of trouble. I bought at 17. What do you advise? Should I sell? Should I buy other coins? You know, what coins should you buy? I mean, let's look at the reality of it. Here's the markets today. Everything's red. Everything. Um, no matter what coin we look at, everything is red. Now, I, my personal opinion, we've been saying this, I've been saying since February, um, you know, we could see three and a, definitely five, five and a half, maybe even less. So it's all about buying at the right times, selling at the right times, holding at the right times, um, what currency to be in at the right time. So, and there's, there's two different ways to look at it. One is the fundamentals and your fundamental belief in crypto. And, you know, there's always that argument of I'm a long-term holder and I believe in it. But no matter whether you're a day trader, a minute trader, you know, trade the waves over a month or two to buy and sell profit or buy and long-term hold. It is an emotional game. So for those people out there that say TA doesn't work and all of this kind of thing, it works with crypto more than any other vehicle out there because of the emotional structure that comes with it. And the emotional cycle that we're seeing playing out now in crypto um, is a six-month cycle that takes 20 years or 10 years, or eight years, you know, it takes years, years and years in gold, commodities, and other investment vehicles, okay? So, you've, you've got to understand that. So, even if you're, you're the long, it doesn't matter how much you believe in crypto, and how much you believe in your coin, and the, 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 the fundamentals, and we're all here because we believe in crypto, and we believe in blockchain. Um, but, you know, it's also got to be a vehicle as an investment to make money supposed to be a better investment than holding money in a bank or you know in the stocks and things like that so we're just simply playing out the second part of the cycle and it's just all red and if there's one thing that I've learned and that I will keep talking about with everybody is how 90% of the people out there will just do the same thing over and over and over again you know um, over and over and over again so to win, you've actually got to be the 10%. You've got to do the opposite. So what do the people who get it wrong do? They buy the green instead of the red. They're more comfortable buying when something pumps. If Bitcoin turns around and pumps today back to seven, people will probably jump in and start buying it at seven. You know, but they're too scared to buy it at six. So buy the red, not the green, number one. 
Number two, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is looking at the US dollar value of their investment, right? Rather than the Bitcoin value. Um, if we all, look, if you got into Bitcoin at $17,000, you did that for a reason. You did that because you think Bitcoin's gonna be 50,000, 80,000, 100,000, a million, well, whatever these people say, okay? One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, guys. Whether it's US dollar is $5 or $50,000. So my biggest advice to everybody right now in a falling market is don't make stupid mistakes. Right? Okay, number one, and I've been saying this for a couple of months now, you should be in, in fiat right now anyway, uh, mainly in fiat uh, from an investment point of view. It's understanding where the market is and where the best value is at any time is the biggest key to succeeding. And if you've got to take your emotions out of it, you know, whether you hate the banks and you love Bitcoin or you ha take the emotion out of it, right? It's very obvious that since February, um, November, November, December, uh, the place to be was Bitcoin and alts, right? January, February, March, for the last six months, fiat is where you needed to be. And you wait for the panic. You wait for the emotional cycle to play out. Now, a lot of people thought that, oh, in February we had panic at 10,000. No. I've been saying since February uh, that, you know, we're going to be seeing at least sub six, I, I think five to five, five, but I wouldn't be surprised if we fall right back down to three. And I'll explain that to you why I think that um, shortly. All right. So that's the markets. I mean, it's just red. There's no need to even, and even the, the green ones are a couple of percent. But then you got Potcoin, which went up 20%, and it fell back down because of old uh, old mate, what's his name? Um, the basketball player that went off with his Potcoin shirt. So that was pretty funny, i got to say. I like seeing that kind of stuff. Crypto, crypto, crypto. Anybody see the Potcoin uh, logo on Dennis Rodman's shirt over there in Singapore? Awesome, love it. But it's funny, isn't it? People see that and they just run out and buy it. And then it just tanks. It, it's, this is why I, I don't trade news at all, ever. Never trade the views. Uh, right, okay. So let's, um, as I said, guys, let me know where you're all from. Let's have a discussion. Rather than this just being a complete TA show of, of me doing, you know, we'll go through the charts, but I want to hear your opinions, guys. What do you think? You know, hey John, how you doing, man? You know, what do you guys think? L let's let's discuss uh, as I'm going through these. Um, hey Dylan, as we go through these charts, um, you know, let's hear what you guys think. Put your opinions out there. Where are we in the emotional cycle? Have we hit panic yet? Are we still in um, denial? Are we not even there yet? Are we going to bottom at five dollars? Are we going to bounce off a six? Really, I want to hear everybody's opinion and, and get a, a discussion on this. Let me know what you think. Because what I'm discussing here is just what I think. It's not you know, anybody else's or any, even the Cryptocurrency Investing Facebook group, um, the moderators and the owners. It's not even their opinions. This is purely my, my opinion. So let's have a look at Bitcoin today because it is the, the big daddy of everything. Um, now, I... Always start off in the bigger picture looking at the daily, the three daily. And for those of you that have seen my emotional cycle graph that you can find on the internet easy, um, you know, I mean, that is it. That is exactly what it is. So if you stop looking at this as far as dollars and cents and you look at it back here from uh, disbelief to hope to belief to optimism to thrill and euphoria, it's very clear to see. There's only two sides to a chart. To a trade okay you want to be in the left and you want to be on the right and for those of you who've been following my ta show for the last couple of months you'll know that i've been saying that this could possibly bottom out all the way down to three now the reason people are saying that is very very simple now and i think the other mistake that people are making right is they're talking about the fall in price in bitcoin but what they should be talking was about the expansion in price last year Whenever something expands like that, it has to retrace, guys. It doesn't keep going to the moon, you know? If you go back and look at Bitcoin, look, check this out, okay? Let's just put it all in perspective. Now, if we go right back to, I don't know, here somewhere, 2000, I don't know, I'll just pick a spot. 
Okay, it looks like nothing compared to now, but if you start zooming in, you're going to see the same emotional patterns playing out. Look, this looked like nothing ten seconds ago, right? Okay, it looks exactly the same as what we're looking at now, doesn't it? Now this rundown here took two years, guys. By the way, okay, um, this here took two years until that broke well a year and a half so do I think this run will be in a year and a half in a year and a half I, I don't think so but if you have a look at the retracement of that move in 2014 okay We did an 88.3 retracement, which is a fair retracement on a complete emotional cycle. All right. Now, two seconds ago, that looked like nothing. So can you believe that people were, they were FOMOing on Bitcoin at 500, 600, 700? And look, people were panic selling Bitcoin at 700. Were you one of those people who panic sold Bitcoin at 700? People down here, look at this. People were panic selling Bitcoin at $250. What would you do to have Bitcoin again? And that's another one I always ask people. If you woke up tomorrow and for one day only, Bitcoin was $250 for one day only, what would you do? Would you, would you buy it? What would you do? Hey, Dylan, how are you doing? Um, I feel like Bitcoin is going to slowly climb and will top the 19 plus it did in December. For sure it will. Don't know when, but for sure it will. Um, people can laugh. Let them laugh, guys. You know, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, they can laugh, laugh, laugh. So I just want to finish on this point that that could be now that we're looking at, but that was 2014. And two minutes ago, it looked like nothing in the big scheme. And as we go through... Now, we can even do more than that, guys. Look at this run here that looks like nothing. Okay, let's have a look at that. And what do you start to see? The same emotional pattern. All right, look at this. People, people were panic selling Bitcoin for $88. Can you imagine if you're one of those people that actually bought Bitcoin at 140 or 150 and as it dumped, you panic sold it below $100. What would you do to have a Bitcoin at $100 again? Okay. So, Rizak, of course you'd buy, man. I'd, I'd sell everything. I'd sell my kidneys, right? Um, unfortunately, that's never going to happen again, I don't think. But I just wanted to put it all in perspective for you guys. You know, this is how markets work. And if you just think you can buy the green, I mean, look, exactly the same as last year, right? Exactly. All green, 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 all red, 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 people panic selling. All right. Um, and then we broke down through the EMA and we stayed there. Oh, that's where we are. Where are we now? Yep. And then it was resistance, resistance, resistance. To make things really simple, guys, and if you're new to technical analysis, analysis and charts, everything's about support and resistance. Do we have support? Do we have resistance? And some of the easiest indicators to get that information from are these red and blue lines, these are your moving averages, your exponential moving averages. Um, the blue one is the 200 day, so it's the, the longer period. And then the red one is the, the now. So the red one in a bull market is always pulling away from the, the longer average, okay, which you can see. Well, there wasn't a 200 day average back then. So, and then the other one is the Ichimoku cloud, right? Green is bullish, red is bearish. Uh, and it's was support, 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 and then look, resistance, 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 until we broke out of that red cloud. And then we had our run from 2016 and 2017. So when we really, really look at it, we had a two-year run. You know, And this is why you've got to look at it this way, guys. Okay, We had a, from here, from $252 to $20,000 in two years. Okay? Put that in perspective, guys. 
You've got to put that in perspective. Uh, somebody at my door, one second. Sorry, guys. Housekeeping in the hotel, in the hotel here on the uh, on the Gold Coast. Um, you know, so it was a parabolic rise, okay, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to do this to show everybody the um, the way it works, okay. Guys, give me one second. Sorry about this. Yeah, I actually want to extend a few more days. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Um, right. Okay, so... Basically, uh, yeah. So, of course, we had to retrace. And now what we're looking at is exactly the same cycle that we looked at back in 2014. But if you look back at it now... Right? It doesn't even look like it happened. So, moving forward, you've got to think of Bitcoin like this. That what we're experiencing now is going to be a little bump in the road. Right? That's fair enough to, to say, isn't it? You know, as we start at some point to find some hope again. You know, and, and then... And that's just the way markets go, guys. So, don't panic. Uh, just stay cool in Bitcoin. All right, let's have a look at what some of the comments are. How long was the dip before going back up? Two years. Is it almost two years, Brandon? Uh, Jamal Hunt, Bitcoin will double top at 20K and make over a 70% drop possible. I went to see Bitcoin at, I want to see Bitcoin at sub 2K prices. Let's be real. Institutional money wants cheap Bitcoin. So Jamal, that's another thing that I talk about in my group over there at Cryptogasmic. And you're 100% right, okay? And this is why you can't have emotions in it. You know, I use a story of, uh, I made the mistake of buying a bar restaurant over in Barbados a few years ago. And it didn't do very well. And then as it was sort of coming to the end, the usual thing you do is you're trying to look for somebody to, for the answer. And right now everybody's begging for the institutional money to come in. But the reality is they're vultures, Right. They're going to wait until something's dead. They can circle and they can see that something's dying, you know, and we can all sit there and, oh, but the institute, but there's still a lot more people to be washed out yet. I don't even, th we're not at capitulation, right? I think it, once we start getting sub six, five and a half, people are going to start bailing out. They're just not going to be able to handle it. So if that's some advice I can give you besides, you know, simple buy the red, sell the green, um, don't make the mistake. Look, if you made the mistake of buying Bitcoin high, okay. That's fine because it's uneducated and you're not to know. But if you now go out and sell the bottom, then that's just stupid. You know, that, that, that's really dumb. So right now it's just a waiting game. So where are we with Bitcoin? We've got a triple bottom through this area, which is usually a bullish sign if we can bounce out of here. Now I'm I mean, I've got a few things wrong over the last couple of months with some of the alts, but I've been pretty spot on with Bitcoin since February. Um, I got out around 10,000. I got out a little bit early. Nine, uh, you know, I didn't get the 20,000 run, but I, I didn't really get back in. And my strategy is very simple. Um, I told everybody in my group over the last couple of weeks, I am not buying Bitcoin over $7,000. So what I'm doing is I am... Accumulating, I'm, I'm in accumulation now. I'm not really playing the swing trades and any trades that I'm buying into um, are bigger coins that I want to hold for a longer term anyway. Um, and the other advice I think I give everybody is, let's say you've got $10,000 to buy into crypto. You don't have to just go and buy $10,000 worth of Bitcoin at one price. Split it up and start small and then gradually make your buys bigger as it falls. All right. Um, I started accumulating a little bit of Bitcoin again under 7,000. Um, but I'll buy even more under six and then even more under five. Right? I've transferred a lot of money across to my bank. Sitting there, I'm sitting mainly in fiat at the moment. And that's it. And we're just waiting for that complete capitulation to happen. So if we go back and we look at that cycle that we just looked at um, before, 
you know and even if we just do a, a basic fib on from when it really sort of took off from here from a thousand dollars to here you know that 88.3 retracement is going to take us back to sub 4,000 that's the reality and it's been the reality since February it doesn't go to 20 grand overnight and it doesn't fall to 4,000 overnight you know um, that's the reality of it however I do think that we're in a different time now than what we were then but a lot of people got burnt in crypto and there's a lot of you know there'll be a lot of people really happy to see this happening and the institutional money that we talk about they want you to lose your money they want you to panic they want you to get out right and then people will bail out and then all of a sudden we'll go to 10 grand again and people will feel stupid then they'll start buying in and the same pattern will repeat but you can really clearly see guys okay I don't know how anybody's been bullish on Bitcoin since February the minute we broke through this daily th cloud, it's been resistance the whole way. Exactly the same as 2014, right? We had the death cross, um, and then this red EMA and the blue EMA, which proved as support, look, support, support, support. The minute it became resistance, it just stayed resistance. We got out of it there for a moment, and luckily in Cryptogasmic, we actually played this run uh, from 6.5 up to 11, which was nice. But it's pure resistance and we tried to get above again but there was I've always been saying play Bitcoin in stages trend lines are your friend guys so we break through the EMA once we did that the next level was the the, the trend line here and I think the trend line was something like this yeah bang and it hit right on the trend and just never got out of there and it's hit it again so we may and that's why I keep saying we may get another bounce and then I'd be looking at seven 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 eight you know these levels but to get back up through nine thousand we've got to get through the emas we've got to get through the daily cloud we've got to get through the downtrend the bears are winning this right so right now the big area i'm looking at and that i may possibly buy some more bitcoin is this triple bottom through here you know i've always said six thousand four hundred is is the line so if i'm thinking there's some support there then I might buy some and the reason I do that is because I got two strategies right I'm accumulating now I'm about getting my seat early at the table I don't mind buying as things are falling and holding a paper loss getting my seat and averaging down you know start buying at six nine buy some more at six five buy some more at five eight and try to get away with it like an average let's say it finds a bottom at five if I can have an average of six when it takes starts to take a bull run from five then I'm in a pretty good position um, now if I get in some here and it does make a run back up to nine grand I'll be taking some profit off the table right here at nine thousand a lot of profit because I know that we, we've still got a long way to come we could keep bouncing up and hitting this trend line all the way down all right so that's where we are with Bitcoin and it basically runs the rest of the market um, Ethereum has shit itself again and, and it did the same thing last year it was struggling with the and you can see it it struggles with these psychological points 600 couldn't do it so now it's back to testing 500 I really do think that Ethereum will probably come back down and test the $400 mark again and I think anywhere for Ethereum at 400 or less is a really again I'll be accumulating a lot of that so let's have a quick little look at some of your questions uh, hey Anthony how you doing man um, the lower the low the higher the high yeah I mean at the moment what everybody's talking about is this um, you know so right now we're, we're meeting the same bottom bottoms but we're getting lower lows look low low so we may you know to be honest I mean, I'm going to look at it a bit further on a smaller time frame. You can see we're actually starting to get a little bit of support out of this area in the last couple of hours. So I still think 6465 is a good place to buy Bitcoin if you want to take a little bit of profit at, you know, up in here somewhere. Seven. If you're doing it for that, if you're looking for a good entry to get in for the long term, now is not it now is not it so it all depends on different people um, 
and what your strategy is and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, otherwise, there's no real point in looking through many of the other charts because they're all the same. They're all the same. You can see the same emotional patterns happening. Okay, And this is how, as a swing trader, it is pretty easy to make money um, because these same patterns do happen over and over again. And basically, I'm looking just to accumulate these bigger coins, you know. I remember getting into Dash last year at 300, playing it up to here. I sold. I didn't get this big run up. Now, I never thought that I would get a chance to buy Dash again at $300, right? So I'm excited by this. But look, there's the emotional cycle again, guys. It's the same. And it doesn't matter. EOS is a perfect example, okay? I was screaming at my group to get into EOS under $6. Nobody listened. I was screaming to get in under $10, and then I was screaming to sell it up here at $18, okay? And then all of a sudden, people woke up, and it was $20, and I would read things on the internet like, um, I can't wait until EOS, is, the minute it hits $16 again, I'm in. Buy the dip and hodl. If anybody ever says to me that their strategy is buy the dip and hodl, I just want to punch them in the neck, because... Um, it's the worst strategy you could ever, ever think of. You know, I mean, you buy the dip. So you bought the dip from 22 to 19. How did that work out for you? Now you're panicking. Now you're questioning your trade. You've got to use the analysis. And I told everybody in my group, and the great thing about crypto is I only told them a week ago, you know, not even that couple of days. I said, wait for sub $10. And people didn't believe me. And bang, there it is, sub $10. Um, and again, just simply using the EMAs, you could probably... We're going to come down and test the $9, and that will be the spot we'll be looking for a little bit of a bounce, depending on the rest of the market. But, you know, I still think, and I've changed my mind, and now I'm looking at EOS at sub $8. So if EOS comes in again at sub 8, I will start accumulating more of that. But I bought in here, I sold a lot there, uh, and that's it. But it's the same patterns over and over and over. So it's more about how fast it expanded and people FOMO'd. So let's have a look at some of your questions here. Uh, Brandon, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but do you think BTC will be above 10K by the end of the year? Yes, I do. Um, I can't see BTC dropping below 4K. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, um, do you have any TA on salt? Says David Eastwood. How you doing, David? What's the best buys now? Um, Adrian, look, my personal strategy is I'm just buying up the bigger coins as they fall. I'm not buying green, I'm buying red. So when I see things like, um, you know, um, when, I, when I see things with red candles on them like this, and if it's something I want, then I'm buying. But I'm buying knowing that we're in a down market right now. And I guess this is the other thing. I get a million phone call um, messages a day. Well, not a million, but a hundred from people saying I'm in trouble. I bought Bitcoin at 17. What should I do? Um, should I get out? And is there something else to buy in? Guys. Let's look at it again. If you would have sold your Bitcoin and panic sold yesterday to buy another coin to try and save you, what? Which one? In the top 100 coins, nothing's more than 3%. Most of it is red. You know? So that's it's just understanding where you are in the market right now, to be brutally honest. Um, I can't see BTC dropping below 4K. That's great, but what's that based on, Dearden? Is that a, a gut feeling? Is there some um, other minor costs, right? Yeah. And I kind of agree with you there. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but some people have told me that, you know, it becomes non-profitable for miners to mine um, below four or 4,500, something like that. Um, what else have we got here? Sounds like a weather forecast. It kind of does, doesn't it, Christopher? You know? Um, and that's basically what it is. What we're waiting for now is the bottom. It's basically that simple. Um, and people are looking for, for, for something that's just not there at the moment. So my advice right now is the best thing that we can do is if you've already bought high, um, the worst thing you can probably do is sell right now. Look, even if you want to sell at a loss, wait for a bounce. There will be a bounce. Even in this panic down here, look, right? Even if it panicked down here, if you just waited, you still could have sold and made an extra $2,000 a coin. Okay? 
So in these t times when it's like this, I usually just walk away and um, wait for the dust to settle. I sit in cash. Of course, I've got my, my Bitcoin and my Ethereum and some TRX and EOS and NEO, but most of it is fiat. And I tell you guys, I'm getting ready to back the truck up. Uh, like I said, I just sent a lot of money across from the bank to the exchanges and I'm just waiting, 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 waiting. Because I like to play the same game that you know, the other successful investors play. I don't play the same game that the 90% um, who lose play. I, so I am going to sit now and wait and panic and panic and panic. And as this, I tell you now, once this breaks down through here, it'll fall really fast, I believe. And, you know, this could take us through to September, I reckon. You know, I, I reckon in the third, in the last quarter of the year is when this will start to pick up. So just try to play the longer term game, guys. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, Max Simpson, are you setting ladder buys at the levels you think BTC will drop to, or are you waiting until you see the big red candles? Yeah. Max, no, I'm... Um, even right now, I've got... I bought some at 6.9, just under 7. I made it clear to everybody I wasn't, I'm not paying a, over 7 grand for Bitcoin, and I've been saying that for a while, and I've stuck to that. Um, and if we do get a good bounce, then I've got some. And if for some reason I got it wrong and it just goes to the moon, then I'll play the, the Elliott waves and I'll make money that way. So I've got my plan. I've got my strategy. Right now, I mean, I've still I've got a bunch of buys for, for Bitcoin all the way down to $3,000 in case there's a big candle wick that buys me in. But I So let's say I got $10,000 to, uh, to, on Bitcoin. I will put $1,000 worth here. I'll put $2,000 worth here. I'll put two thousand dollars worth here, a thousand, you know, two thousand dollars worth down here, and just spread them out to try to get a really good average. You know, if bottom, if BTC bottoms at four and I've got an average of five, cool. I'm I'm in pretty good standing to get back to break even, um, and I've got a good seat at the table. And it doesn't mean I then wait for six thousand to chase it. All right. Um, I just want to have a little look at Litecoin. Can you see the same pattern, guys, over and over and over again? Okay, so this analysis is off. And Litecoin has actually now fallen through that triple bottom. So I would expect to see Litecoin falling further. And I think, guys, Litecoin is one that you can make a lot of money on in the next year. If we get another opportunity, so, so let's just look at this quickly from a quick fib point of view. If we look at the whole, yeah, I mean, look, we're basically back to where this thing took off last year. Okay, so maybe expect another little bounce out of here, back up to 125 or, or something like that. But, you know, if we get the opportunity to buy Litecoin again back here, again, I'll sell everything I've got. So there's really exciting times coming, guys. So this is the time now that you need to learn technical analysis, um, understand support and resistance, how to find it, what to look for, a good group to bounce off of. Cryptocurrency Investing Facebook group is a great place for that. My group, Cryptogasmic.com, you can check out the website. There's lots of educational videos and tools there. We have a Telegram chat group uh, and a VIP chat group. Everything is there above in the, in the top. But definitely learn. Don't do everything on gut feeling. I mean, I can look at that and it's just resistance, 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 resistance. And everything is just heavily oversold with no support. It's on the floor, on every time frame. Yeah, and still falling. Okay. Neo is another one that I'm big on. You know, so I'm accumulating all of these coins, getting my seat ready. I still think they're going to fall a lot further. Um, I did get in at NEO at around about $48. We had a nice run up to 55 and then I stopped out. So I'm still holding a little bit of NEO spot coins. So things like that. Um, OMG is another one. Still hasn't reached that double bottom yet and it's right on the, on the trend line now. So we're just, you know, now we may get a bounce out of there, but it'll fall through that trend line as well. So it's the waiting game right now, guys. Patience, patience, 
patience, patience. Power is a, a coin that I'm big on. Um, I haven't checked that one yet today. Yeah. So it's just the same patterns over and over and over, guys, right? So everything is just washing out from the expansions last year. Everything is washing out. It's the same pattern, isn't it? Over and over. See? Just washing out. Bouncing right off the 88.3 mark now. With the double bottom there. So, you know, it may get a bounce out of here over the next couple of days. Let's just have a quick look at the market cap again. And it's been the same game over and over and over for, for, for months. Uh, it goes down to 250, goes back to 350, goes back to 260, goes to 340. This is just people manipulating the market to make money. Uh, so now we're back to 284. We were over 300 yesterday. Um, so, you know, we may run down to 260, 250. There will be another bounce, guys. Right? There will be another bounce. All right? So, yeah, you can see, look, in the last hour, there's a little bit more gains coming in. And this is why it's so emotional. And this is why it's important to learn technical analysis to try to take that emotion out of it, you know. Um, and it's bouncing on these support lines that I've been saying to everybody for the last 30 minutes, okay. Now, how big those bounces are going to be, I don't know. You can play these bounces to make little profits. But most of you are looking for good entries to get in. And TRX, I was expecting a bounce right here. So I'm looking for a bounce on TRX somewhere in this region. Okay. I actually bought some TRX yesterday. I laddered down from here. So I'm looking for that to get a little bounce. Um, and that's basically it. So let's have some last final questions. Jeff Scott, don't catch falling knives. Well, you know, you don't catch falling knives, but don't chase a horse that's already run from the stable, brother, as well. you got to do it smart. You know, um, I will never be a person. I would rather have my seat at the table and wait a month or two months. It's about getting the best entry you can. I, I don't believe in, um, in chasing anything. Okay, and we use TA for that. All right, guys, you got any last final questions before we wrap this up for today? And then we'll check in on it again tomorrow. So my overall analysis is that we're still going down. I think we will get a bounce if we play the same market cap game that's been going on. 280, we might get a run back up to 300. But those highs are getting lower. The highs are getting lower. And be very, very careful. Okay. Um, and that's it. All right, guys. So... Thank you for being here in Cryptocurrency Investing Facebook group. Um, it really is a great Facebook group. If you're looking for a really good Telegram support group, uh, Cryptogasmic is, uh, is the one. If you can't see the link up there, you can contact me directly. Um, and Cryptogasmic.com is our website if you want to become a member. Um, we have training videos, some signals, live trading sessions, and it's more about educating. I want to educate people so they can make the decisions for themselves and be. That's why I like cryptocurrency investing because I, I want crypto to be full of communities, and we're doing the same thing at Cryptogasmic as well. All right, hey, thanks, Novak, uh, Jamal, Brendan. Good to have you guys. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.